to evacuate, two doors in the cockpit, turn the handle both ways, two doors in the back here, lift the handle. No meals, no movies, no bar service, no duty for shopping, no peanut, no store, no toilets. Any questions? Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. We've got a very unique episode. In this week's show, we're in Labrador and it's early season. It's actually the 25th of June. There's still snow on the ground. The water's high, the water's cold, but the fly fishing's gonna be red hot. We're at Mackenzie River Fly Fishing Lodge. We're gonna be going for landlocked salmon, lake trout, big brook trout, and even northern pike on a fly. It's gonna be a great episode, lots of tactics, lots of fun. Join me and my friend here for a great show. Go, go. Oh, that was awesome. It's gone into the current. There you go. Fish on. I'm gonna let him go right now. There he goes. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. Our adventure begins in Labrador City at the Air Saguenay base. We board their float plane for the 120 mile flight to the Mackenzie River watershed in the wilds of Labrador. Joining me on this trip is my good friend Richard Smith from Florida, who's a passionate angler. For Richard, this is a very special trip as he has quite a fondness for the rugged wilds of Labrador. As we begin our approach to the lodge, we can see snowbanks throughout the region, even though it's the last week of June. It's been a long winter and a late spring. For fishing, this translates to high and cold water. Definitely not a time for hatches, but it's definitely a time to cast streamers and even mice patterns for big brook trout, northern pike, lake trout, and especially landlocked salmon. Eight years before, I had visited Mackenzie River in late August and had experienced some of the best and most exciting fishing of my life, catching big landlocked salmon on streamers. I have returned to Mackenzie River for the opening week with the hope of repeating this exceptional oh, action. Nice job. Oh, nice job. Landlocked salmon are prized game fish because they will hammer streamers and even topwater flies, and once hooked, will go airborne. There's so much fun on a five or six weight rod, so my hopes are high that we can tie into the species as well as the bonus of lake and brook trout, plus northern pike. After unloading our equipment, we quickly began setting up our rides. We were really anxious and excited to get out in the water. After a short trek through the forest and a little bit of snow, we got into the Gander River boats and headed to some prime pools. We're very fortunate to be led this week by some really exceptional guides who are also wonderful people. Richard's being taken care of by passionate angler and guide Etienne Merrier. Head guide Jean-Paul Desjardins was to be my mentor on the river. Jean-Paul, affectionately known as JP, 
is one of the kindest and most professional guides I've ever had the pleasure of working with. After getting set up on our first pool, JP told me more about what to expect in early season fishing here on the Mackenzie River. Early in season, um, in the deepest spots of the Mackenzie River, we can, uh, we can expect for uh, lake trout that are uh, leaving the deeper ponds or the lake, they're dropping back and they're, uh, they're trying to feed, in fact, on uh, everything that moves and uh, brook trout. We're catching mostly fish on uh, streamers and uh, topwater flies like the mouse or uh, the gurglers. And then um, uh, the landlock are running through the system, what we call the, the kelp, you said, the drop backs, I like the, to call the dark them. Ones, yeah. Darker one that spend the winter in here. And uh, slowly but surely, the fresher uh, salmon will get, uh, will get into the river, and I, I expect some today. So what I'm doing, we got the fast water coming down through here. The fish are actually holding in pockets in the fast water. I had one take out there. Just caught one here in the edge. They're gonna be anywhere along this edge. They go in the, to the slower water here in the middle. They don't like that area generally because there's gonna be pike or lake trout that could eat them. So they're gonna be in the faster water or on the inside edges here. And uh, what I'm doing with the uh, mouse pattern and you can do this different mice patterns, but this gurgler seems to work really well, is I'm holding the rod tip up high, shaking it as it goes across and letting the current do all the work after I cast it out. And then as it comes to the end here, then I'll strip it back, little slow strips. And you never know where the fish are gonna hit. Somewhere in there, it could be out in the faster water, they see it and they'll chase it, or right here on the edge. Okay, take a step in. Oh, there's a little guy right there. Just took it right here at the, right in front of me. That is so cool. Oh, that's a beautiful brookie. This is what we're looking for. Oh, look at that. So I think there's gonna be a bunch down here in the edge, but I have one hit right out there in the faster water. Let's see if I can get his head up. I'm using uh, the 3X tippet. There we go. Beautiful. All right, oh, fly already popped out. Not bad, look at that. We're gonna let him go right now, there he goes. Beautiful. <laughs> On top water, this is so exciting. Good All right. While I was busy casting a top water fly for brook trout, Richard was getting lots of action on a streamer, only he wasn't catching brook trout. Okay, we have a, uh, I don't know what we have here, but we have a fish on here. It's a mystery fish. Am I fighting this fish all right or not? I guess there's no reason to get him on the reel right now, right? How about a, uh, what do I have? A lake trout. Okay, my first laker. How about a, he looks more like a, a, a lake trout. He's not uh, hooked real tight though, is he? I cast on about a 90 degree angle out here and let the fry drift and uh, the line basically just stopped and uh, I lifted the rod and it was a nice lake trout. And this is the fly I used, a woolly bugger, a, uh, a, a green woolly bugger. It wasn't, yes sir, thanks buddy. You're welcome. He gets a big smile on his face when you catch a fish though, JP does, you know yeah, it? Yeah, it's, I don't know. I... After several minutes, it was apparent the surface action was not really happening. Yeah, no, we got getting move. a little bit more there. So I switched to a streamer like Richard to search for big brook trout. I'm doing a downstream mend on this just to give it some speed. So, what it is, it's got some jumping. weight, it hasn't gone airborne like that landlocked I hooked a few minutes ago. So that was on the inside.
That's a pike. Oh, no, it's a, a lake, lake, lake trout. Nice size. Yeah, it is too. It's like she came over and she didn't yeah. know. Trying to use the current here. Heads up. Here we uh, go. Beautiful fish. So even though we're not having success getting the land locks, we're getting brook trout, we're getting pike, and we're getting lots of beautiful lake trout. Look how silvery she is. That's a fresh fish, yeah. isn't it, coming up from the lake? Yeah, compared to uh, some others we had. On our second day at Mackenzie River Lodge, we awoke to overcast skies, but no winds. The main lake in front of the lodge was totally flat and calm. According to the head guy, Jean-Paul, he strongly recommended we take advantage of these favorable conditions and fish several locations on the main lake for big lake trout. Of course, we listened to our guide, and right after breakfast, we headed out in the boats. Once out on the lake, JP discussed what structure we're fishing to find big lake trout in relatively shallow water. So JP, what's the structure that you and the Tian have brought us to here? Um, you got Rick over there, I'm here, and we're basically drifting. It looks like on a big flat, but could you explain the type of st uh, structure we have here and why the Lakers would be here at this time of year? Yeah, so today we're fishing on the rocky point right in front of the camp. Um, I think it's a really good, uh, really good ambush spot for, uh, for those lake trout because we're on, a, on a probably, I'd say, six feet at most of water and it drops to 12 on each side of that point. And um, the way predator fish likes to hunt, it's, uh, it's a perfect spot for them. Early in season, we catch uh, mostly like, uh, lake trout on this spot. When the water gets warmer, they, uh, they tend to go in uh, deeper, uh, deeper holes of the lake. Um, but uh, once in a while, uh, we can get a surprise and, uh, and uh, get a nice landlock, uh, landlock salmon on this, uh, on this rocky point here. So right now, I'm using a full sinking line. It's a great uh, 24 foot sink tip and it's an S6, so it's going down at six inches per second, which is perfect for here. I got a really fast countdown. The flat and the rocky flat we're on is six to eight feet. I used uh, uh, about a six foot piece of leader. I got 12 pound test on here because some of these lake trucks can be quite big. And I started off using the, the, what they call the Christmas tree. So weighted fly, got a single hook, barbless hook here at the back. I like it because lake trout will come back here and they'll grab at the end and you'll get them. But the only problem I'm having, I keep snagging. So I think I need to go to something a little more uh, neutral, buoyant neutral. So that when I'm stripping it back, it's staying off the bottom. I want it near the bottom, but not on the bottom. This one's tapping the rocks and snagging up. It's just a bit too heavy. If I go to some deeper water, this thing's gonna be perfect or some current. It didn't take us long to find some cruising lake trout in six to 10 feet of water. It was game on almost immediately. So that is amazing. I just cast over here into a foot and a half of water. I was just trying to wet my fly and I had this fish hit and I think it's a lake trout. And he took my zoo cougar, I just changed colors. And it's a nice fat one and he's in a foot, foot and a half of water. He's right behind a rock. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at the colors of that fish. And the fly just popped out. Wow, this is insane, I'm catching fish in a foot and a half of water. When hunting early season lake trout, you have to do quite a bit of exploring to find these cruising fish. JP was driving us from one piece of structure to another. We made a few dozen casts, and if we had no success, then we moved on. But when we found them, wow, it was virtually non-stop action with powerful runs and solid head-shaking dives towards bottom. There he goes. Go. And it's a good one. Oh yeah, I gotta get this on the reel. Oh, look at this. Go right underneath the boat. Nice. Look at the head on that. Oh, all power. 
Like this is so much fun as a bonus to come in here and catching brook trout and landlocked salmon. And not to mention we did get lake trout in the river, but to be able to come out here and cast and get lake trout and northern pike. Look at that. Oh, I need its head in my yeah, sight. Well, there you okay. go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Good job. And he didn't tap. No. He I'm... just boom. <laughs> nine weight rod, you use an eight or a nine weight. I'm using the sink tip. This is fine. All right. So one of the things that happens is you uh, have a, a fly you want to use. In this case, I've got a smelt pattern here. I think it's going to work with these landlocked salmon or the brook trout, but I need it to be weighted. Rather than put on a piece of split shot 12 to 18 inches above, which weakens the leader or the tippet, uh, a better way to do it, I found, is putting the beads, the beads we actually use for fly tying, I bring them out on the river and you just put it in above your knot, slides and you cast with it and it does the same thing as the weight and it's right at the fly so it's just like a weighted fly. When the clouds dissipated later in the day and the sun came out, the lake trout bite dramatically subsided. Though more clouds were coming, Jean-Paul recommended we check some of the lake's back bays to search for post-spawn pike. Most of the pike were from 20 to 32 inches, with the biggest fish a solid 36 incher. It was simply insane and so much fun. Eventually, we got tired from all this action, so we headed back to the lodge for a great supper and some well-deserved rest. Tomorrow, it's time to search for those big brook trout and landlocked salmon. On our third day here at Mackenzie River in Western Labrador, it was decided that the guides would take Richard and I downriver in search of both brook trout and landlocked salmon. I was very excited about the prospect of finding landlocks and casting a streamer to them. Of course, the challenge is to find them in this unusually high water. It's hard to see the fly. There you go. Fish on. Beautiful. A little bigger fish than I thought. So I think there's going to be a bunch down here in the edge. We're just getting started here. There we go. Yeah, that is a nice fish.
As we worked our way downriver, casting to the various runs for brook trout and landlocks, a pattern began to emerge. We kept catching lake trout, even on surface flies. Well, we were just getting towards the end of the run, looking for landlocks, and I uh, swung the fly through. I felt a thump, and I went, hmm, was that bottom? And then I gave it a, a little pull, and then had the hit. And as you can see, this six weight, I'm in my backing already. Oof. So I'm gonna try and use side pressure, get this guy out of the current and into the slack water. So this fish, got him on back on the line. So what I'll do, JP, if you I'm wanna go there, downstream. I'll bring yep. it to you there. He's waiting for the get call. him out of the current. I think he's kind of confused as to why he's moving up river. You can see that, look at this, look at this rod go. So I'm using a 15 foot sink tip, it's an S6, so six inches per second. Oh yeah, that's a decent fish. I've got four feet of 2X, got lots of strength here for both the land locks, which can be quite big. I think the average is probably four or five pounds. And then of course he's lake trout. I'm gonna get the head up. They're like the Timon of the North. There we go. Right in there. <laughs> oh, and in the current behind a rock. I think the lake trout are one of the most underestimated fish uh, from freshwater, you know, in North America. They tend to be deep water fish, fish with downriggers or even live bait or whatever. But mm -hmm. for a fly fisherman, catching a fish that size in the current, By the time we got down to one of JP's favorite locations for landlocked salmon, it was very apparent they weren't going to be there. Our underwater cameras that we had placed throughout the river really told the story. Seemingly in every pool and every set of rapids, the cameras were seeing lake trout on the hunt, searching for prey. Watch as this brook trout senses it's being hunted and then quickly swims away as a large lake trout comes into view. For smaller brook trout and landlocked salmon, this means danger, as eight to 15 pound lake trout could easily make a meal of them. Usually the lake trout are not in these places, but because of the late spring and high water, the lakers have easy access. So the trout and salmon were constantly on the move, which made finding them very difficult. But it wasn't all bad. As Richard and I were catching these lake trout in three to five feet of water everywhere we went. The lakers were hammering and crushing our streamers and on five and six weight rods, this was so much fun. Go, go. Nice, that was awesome. Good job. You're almost there, right on the reel. Woohoo! I can follow it if you want. Uh, I think you might have to. I'm in my backing. I'm gonna try and keep him up. Oh, that was awesome. Don't know what it is yet. It just hammered it. I was just doing the little twitch near the boat. Just like my guide told me to. Coming towards me. Whoa. Well, we've, we've been here for six days now and the uh, fishing has been good. And the reason the fishing is good is because uh, they have a, a multi-species lodge here where they catch landlocked salmon, 
uh, lake trout, pike, and brook trout. And uh, this week, the brook trout fishing and uh, landlocked salmon fishing was kind of slow. So we ended up doing a lot of fishing for lake trout and, and pike and had a, a really a great fish. So that if one species isn't working, we, we have another species to go to. And that's what makes this different than a lot of uh, lodges in Labrador that only have one species to fish for. Well, what I like about Labrador is, is that we're out in the uh, wilderness and uh, there's very few people that live here. And it's just one of the, the most uh, wilderness places left on earth. The fishing is really untouched. It's only fished a couple months a year and there's very few lodges and uh, everything is natural. It's a, just a great place to come. It's a little cold, uh, but it's, uh, it, it, uh, it really brings you back to nature. So today I'm bringing Colin on the very top pool of the Mackenzie River. Um, it's, um, it's a really nice pool. It's one of my favorite. Um, at this time of the season, we'll be using a streamer. Uh, we'll stand on each side of the pool. It gets to eight feet deep, so we'll be using a sink tip and a weighted fly. Um, the water is still really cold, so uh, I'm going to ask him to do a slow presentation. And most of the time, the fish are right up, um, right up the pool, right behind the drop-off. So uh, hopefully we'll catch uh, some nice fish today. This is going to be a pike <laughs> or a lake trout. I literally w was letting it rest and I lifted up. Brook this trout. Brook trout? Yep. So obviously the trout are, are not into aggressive, yep. fast. They're into okay. slow. But the key is, you explained it to me, that we got to use a streamer and get it down and find the right technique. That's a good, nice, nice size female. Yeah, it's a brookie. Okay. A female. She's using the current. It is. Got a five weight rod here, perfect for these. And it took that uh, green woolly bugger with an orange head. My idea with the orange head was maybe to, um, to imitate the little egg going by because we're right after the sucker spawn okay. and I think the latest thing they gorged on were eggs. Eggs, okay, yeah. the sucker eggs. Exactly. We've seen that before. It gets pretty much ready, so I'm going to break. What the strength tip is? Is it 3x? Um, it looked like it. I think it's 3x I put on. It's really giving a good account of itself. There we go. All right, beautiful. <laughs> First book trout of the day. Well, I gotta say that was pretty cool. JP, we just tried to uh, putting a gurgler through, no action. Temperatures dropped a bit and the winds come up. He said, let's put on a streamer. Had me co 90 degrees crossed, two upstream men's, and then I just pulsated it through the edge of the seam here, and this brook trout took it. Oh, and beautiful colors. He's really using the current. So I'm out here, not in a dangerous spot, but I just want to get a good purchase. Thanks for your arm. Okay. All right. Okay, now he's coming towards me. Got him in. And this is why you come to Labrador. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Right where you're supposed to be. I'll actually take him down to you there, if you don't mind. I'll stay here. I'll bring him down towards you. Oh, he's using that current again. Here, I, get him, I got his head turned. Yeah, I got him up. Heads up. All right. Beautiful colors. And what's amazing is that it's, you know, the end of June and they're already sporting gorgeous colors. They don't get dark like some of them do with the tannic in the water. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well, that was sadly the end of our trip. Though I wanted to catch landlocked salmon, it wasn't to be. 
But it wasn't all bad. We certainly had a great time catching lots of big lake trout, pike, and some beautiful brook trout. A wonderful fishing trip for any angler. To learn more about Mackenzie River Lodge or our series, please visit our website. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,